We have three V12 Ferraris and they are all not working properly. We've got Dave's 599 on the rack here that's already got the manual conversion on it, but Damon got a little too aggressive with it and completely smoked the clutch. We've got to repair that as well as the power steering system because something's wrong with that, so we're gonna change the pump out. Also, put an e-brake in this car. We've also got the F12 over here that you guys know is a long-term project. We've got to build a subframe for it. We have to just keep moving forward. And Damon's 599 is not here at the moment. It's at PFS. It just got a fresh wrap. We're gonna go pick that up right now. That color just screams Ferrari. It's perfect. This is the new DDE 599 for David. Full body red. The roof was done in satin black to kind of flow into the carbon fiber. It looks great. Yeah, we'll get it back to the shop and we'll completely disassemble the entire car. Undo what we just did. Yeah, we well, just put it back together, <laughs> man. Yeah, we gotta go put a handbrake in it, some more steering angle, power steering pump, manual conversion, upgraded clutch. Ferrari's gonna love it. Ferrari, oh man. Oh, they're Ferrari gonna love it. Cease and desist the writing right now for this video. <laughs> Dude, for, they're literally sitting there at corporate watching these videos yeah. and going, man, I can't wait for the next DDE yeah, video to come out. Like <laughs> signing a check, they're ready. Oh, you're gonna do that for the car? Oh, okay. cool, cool, cool. Oh, you're doing that too? Yeah, I'm gonna sign that on <laughs> I gotta give it up to a nose attack. In the sun, this color looks way different. Inside, yeah, it looks pretty good. But outside, dude? Like it pops, it yeah. shines. It looks like it has depth, like a paint job. I don't know how they do it. I don't either, but dude, hats off to them because they did a killer job. What do you think about the new wrap? I think it looks slightly better. I mean, slightly better? A lot better. Sean, what's your thoughts? It's red. It is red. <laughs> All right, we got both of the 599 in the building. We're ready to put this one up on the rack and tear it apart. So we'll have two 599s that are completely disassembled. All right, so we're getting the last of our Ferrari V12 cars put onto the Ben Pack two post lifts, three dead V12 Ferraris. Lots of dollars, but we're trying to fix that. We're trying to get them all up and running and uh, dialed in properly. This car, we're gonna get it up and we're gonna pull the subframe out of it with the quick change differential. It's basically hanging there on a brace I made to kind of locate it. We're gonna pull that out of the car and then we'll be able to start figuring out how we're gonna mount this thing into the subframe. So the subframe's all aluminum and building an aluminum mount's gonna be really difficult. So I think we'll make a steel mount for it that bolts on to the aluminum subframe, but we'll figure out all those details once we get it out of the car and get it onto the fab table. Get that 305, 30, 20 off of there, Tim. Woo! All right, so I'm gonna start pulling off the suspension corners so we could get the subframe out and just take off a little bit of weight and pull out the suspension and then, you know, pull it off. Easy. Look at that thing balancing on there. Oh, shit. Because <laughs> I made it so it's just a sandwich in between the subframe uh, just to kind of locate it. Okay, so we figured out what we're gonna do with the subframe. We're going to get another piece of this uh, two inch square tube, and then we're gonna tack weld them onto here so that this is higher than these bolts. That's gonna give us a nice level surface to work with when we flip this thing upside down. We'll use our clamps, clamp it directly to the table, and then we'll be able to move the subframe and get it leveled, and then we'll make uh, kind of like a little jack stand for it. So something that will hold the front and keep it exactly in place where we want it to be. Then we have a nice solid work surface. Everything's gonna stay in place and we can measure exactly what the heights are to these bolt holes, and then we can draw up a pattern, cut it out of the plasma table, and uh, build a brace for this thing. I'm gonna start taking the exhaust out. I already got like all the under trays and the support braces out. Get all this stuff out, get the trans out with the torque tube and everything so we can start going on the manual swap and the exhaust on this thing so we can have two 599s shooting flames doing crazy stuff in the back. All right, so I finally got one piece of the exhaust off. I had to get this off first before I took the O2 sensor off. The wrench wouldn't fit into the spot where they are. I had to loosen both of these, drop them, and then crack them loose. But that's fine. Now, once these two are finally out, so I still have this one to go, and then this middle section can come out and everything in the back will come out. We'll have most of the exhaust out and then we'll have access to the transmission priority right now to get that out so we can basically get the manual swap going because that's gonna be a pretty big process. Hello. It's only a little bit tight. Shit. They did not want those to come loose. Yep, that's a uh, that's melted cat. An X. I'm exhausted. Get it? Because it's an X and it's an 
All right, so now I'm gonna just start draining the transmission. That way there's less weight in the transmission and hopefully there's less chance of like stuff spilling out because there is a leak somewhere. We don't really know where it is yet, but hopefully it's just like all the F1 transmission stuff that we're gonna remove anyways. Well, I'm gonna back up then. <laughs> Yeah. This Reno's so good. Like, yeah. it looks mean black. For what we do, and, and for you guys to see the car and the lines on the car, this is way better. Yeah. Right away, you're like, oh, it's a Ferrari. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to start to pull this car apart a bit. I'm gonna pull the wheel liner out of here. There's a windshield washer tank back there that we're gonna ditch. So just remove that thing, and then that'll give us a spot to put our power steering pump. Figure out how it's gonna get mounted in there, what kind of brackets we're gonna need to make. Hello, Sean. Hey. What is this? This is a plate. For what? The diff. How is it gonna mount? Uh, like this. Oh, that's backwards. Oh. Take two. Take two. Like this. What's it gonna do? It's gonna hold the diff. I'm doing what? Falling. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna take out the old mufflers and I can't wait to get the new Valtronic mufflers in so we can hear that high-pitched scream just like out of Dave's car and also get them glowing hot so they can start exploding. <sighs> yes. Nice. There you go. All right, bring that guy down here. It smells wintry fresh. It's got a little what bit of... What are you doing? That's not how you do that. Ooh, double pumper. Oh, oh, shoot. You good? I'm slipping. I'm slipping. I'm stepping on oil. Oh. Got it. Do we need this? So I just got the F1 system out of the car, and now it's time to uh, actually pull the whole transmission, torque tube, scatter shield slash bell housing kind of deal out. Just like this car, it should be pretty simple. This is a big moment. Ah. Don't screw up my car. You no, can screw up good. this car. Don't actually, worry. We have a, don't worry my car either, Tim. No, we have a your parts car's car. Apart. We have a no, parts car don't. right here. <laughs> it's called the F12. Okay, this is a big what? moment. What are we doing? We are gonna pull the transmission out. With really? That? Yeah, this is what we used last on Dave's car. That is car. huge. Special Ferrari tool. Okay, let's go. Well, I think it's a lot. Do you need a hammer? No, 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 I can no, get no, a hammer. No, 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 no hammer. Okay. We have a situation. More wood? More wood. Wood! How much wood could a wood chuck chuck wood chuck chuck wood? All right, this is all we have left, so hopefully this works. Keep going, keep going. going. Okay, That's stop, it. Stop, stop, stop right there. Okay. Okay. All right, Tim's ready to come off? Yeah. All right, Remember, we had, it? we had to pry it. Yeah, well, wait. You know what we might need, though? You need the hammer? Yeah, the hammer. Damon! Yeah? I need the hammer. No! I got the Ferrari, I got the Ferrari hammer. <laughs> Not that. What do you mean, no? Yeah, it's perfect. All right. All right, Mark, you're in the danger zone. You're in the danger zone. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Moving. Toretto! <laughs> Cops come to my house, because somebody knocked me out. You know what? I think it was you. I never knocked out nobody! <laughs> yeah, she's moving now. Ooh. Last time, did Mike drop Dave's transmission, so. What? Nothing. I'm gonna drop Mike. <laughs> See that separation? Ooh. Ready for the drop? Oh no, my, my stack, my Jenga stack. Ooh. Oh! There we go. A little bit. Stop. It's not very stable, but you know what? Go up. That looks seriously sketchy. No, no, we're good, we're good. Go up, go up. Oh my god. <laughs> go up, go up, what? go up. We're good, go up. We missed one. What do you mean we missed one? <laughs> okay, stop. <laughs> Dude. You Dude, I watched it starting to pick the transmission off that one and started to roll it off the bins. Ooh, Ooh, we're, we're good, we're good, we're good. We're good, we're good. We're good there? Yeah, we're good. No, wait, wait, stop. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. <laughs> okay. Tim, you're leaking on the floor here. You're leaking on the floor. What? Oh, you're right. Look how, look at all the fluid coming out. The more I lower it, look, 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 it's pouring out. <laughs> no, no, stop, stop. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's actually crazy to see this. I didn't realize it was like this big of a piece. So the next step is we gotta take the clutch and the flywheel out. No, 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 no. Here, I'll, I'll let you use your favorite. No, Whoa, hey, hey, hey. That's the starter gear. Oh, you, what do you want me to do? You can use this, here. Oh, that's my, that's the tool. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Okay, these ones. 
These ones? No, 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 these ones, these ones. That one? Oh my gosh, put it all the way in before you shoot. Wait, I didn't, I didn't even say it like that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yo. This one? No, 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 that one. That this one. one? Yeah. How do you know not that one, but this one? Because it goes in the Bro, I removed a part. I removed a part. All right, let's see it, Tim. How cool is that? This one's not that bad. We can put this back in Dave's car. Oh, that'd be dirty. <laughs> and we put the stock one back in Dave's car, put it all back together. Dude, that'd be the best prank ever. Yeah, it's good. It's not like the other one at all. No. My work is... Oh. <laughs> it is dirty. Dude. <laughs> oh, that's not fair. You got gloves on? Yeah. Bro, that's cheating. <laughs> you ain't no real mechanic. I'm putting this uh, eighth plate in here. I'm going to cut out some tabs for the Porsche Motorsport power string pumps that we're going to put in both of the 599s. So I drew up the tabs. I'm going to make those, bend them, bolt them to the pump, and then I'll put it in the car and figure out the base plate where it's going to mount to. So we're just making the mount to hold the quick change differential into the factory aluminum subframe. So that's what we're doing right now. Right now. Then once that's in, we put the engine transmission back in. We measure for a drive shaft. We can get that made. What do you got? What do you got? Uh, what are we doing? The intake manifold for the F12. What? I didn't know it was done. Yep, he banged it out for us. Holy like, crap. Yeah. Dude, that looks sick, right? The How inside, do you make that? That's crazy. Dude, it's so that's jewelry. Many details. It's the inside looking. Look at that. That's through one of the holes of the throttle bodies. The, yeah, exactly. It's gonna have double throttle bodies, and then in the middle here, it's got these pillars that bolt down to keep yeah. the center of the box from touching up. Let me show them a, uh, a little teaser, a little, a little, a little, a little. There we go. It looks like wood grain. I know, right? It, it's it's a, so cool the way he cut it. The machine, the way yeah. it's billet. Woo! Gonna ship it out next week. How long will it take to get here from Sweden? We want to know how long from Sweden. <laughs> And please send some Swedish chocolate. Oh, yeah. He's gonna send us. I don't know fish. why all of a sudden I have. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I need. More red dye in my diet. <laughs> all right, so I just got this driver's seat out and ready to go. Okay. We have just enough room. There we go. All right, so I just got the F1 switches out. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, why are you sitting on the floor? Look, I got perfect seating position. That's hilarious. Well, you weren't kidding when you said you got to take the interior out. Yeah. Holy moly. The whole nine yards here. Yeah, just for a, a little gated shifter to be right here, you know? Yes, let's do it. You know, here's your carbon piece. Oh, sweet. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I mean, this is more throwable, but. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well. What else? No, let's, no, no. Let's take this that's it, that's it, that's it. You said we just put the manual shifter in it. Well, there is going to be a manual shifter. Do you need this still? I don't need that. What happens to my emergency roadside assistance button? What happens when I push this? Next Wait, I, I went Italian gentleman comes on and says, Hello, my name is Luigi. How can I assist you today? Would you fry help? Fry roadside assistance. I bring you an espresso. How long is it until the clutch is done? The clutch pedal? No, the clutch. Oh, the clutch. The clutch clutch. Oh, I, I just dropped it off. Damn. So I don't... <laughs> you need to be my muscle, man. You work out, you got the gun show, you gotta get in there. Flex, Tim. When, when you <laughs> take parts to people, you grab them by the shirt and you say, listen up, sucker. This, this part needs to be done by tomorrow. Hell, it should have been done already. Why are you standing around, fool? Skinny, yo! Welcome to the HQ, brother. Thanks, man. Glad to be back. Hey, man. What do you think about us? Uh, that's what I was just telling them. Like, it's crazy to me how they just take apart not just any car, but a Ferrari, and just make it a straight race car. Yeah, that's insane to me. Would you have done it this way? <laughs> yeah, right. He's giving us some pointers on how we should do it. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. I'm working on my, my Lego collection right now, and I'm about halfway through about eight builds, so I can tell you how there far you go. I can go. You done the Millennium Falcon yet? Actually, I have. Hey. <laughs> All right, so we have these cross braces cut out and tacked together. These are basically going to slide in here, and then these plates are going to get welded to the front, back, bolted in, and we'll be able to drop the quick change in and out pretty easy from the bottom. A steel box that bolts into this aluminum subframe. That's the hard part, because we can't really weld to it so this was the original cross brace that was made out of aluminum and it was all one piece in the subframe we could have left this here but if we left it there then getting the differential out the bottom of the subframe would be really difficult so we'd have to drop the whole rear subframe to get the differential out so chopped this thing out plated it reinforced all that and now we have a square tube going across the back a lot of this stuff up here is just to help keep everything square so this will be gone but the square tube will be there and then these ones that run forward onto this plate there's also another plate that goes up here that'll get bolted in so those will drop in 
and uh, we'll have four bolts up there, two more bolts here that are gonna be bigger later. There's just some stock rev nuts in there. But after we get this all tacked in place and figured out, then we'll drill these out and probably, probably some 12 millimeter bolts because they're gonna go straight into the aluminum. So 12 millimeter like coarse thread, we'll put those in there. We'll have a plate that goes on here with a couple bolts, sandwich plate, that thing. This thing's gonna be pretty stout. When this is all done, then we'll flip this whole thing over and then we'll build the top part of the brace so we get it all the way boxed in and it's not just held in from the bottom of the diff. These are the two tabs for the cross brace. These are gonna get welded on here. These top ones will get welded to the actual cross brace and then bolted into the subframe. Bottom one will act kind of as like a double shear, get bolted on from the bottom and keep that thing in place. I've got the power steering pump mount for the 599. This is the first one. I'll take it over to the 599, make sure it fits in the car, and then I can make the second one. While all this is going on, Tim's over here with Steve, and they're currently checking everything between the two cars. This one obviously has the manual conversion done already. The easiest thing, since we have both these cars, they're both apart enough to see where everything is. We can make sure that they're both identical. Start cutting out the tunnel in here, drilling holes, making all that. And while they're doing all of that, I'm gonna get in this car also, and and figure out how to mount the e-brake so I can start working on making those plates just keep these things moving forward. We'll get this tank out of here, get it out of the way, basically prepping this car for the power stream pump also. So I gotta modify that, that aluminum cross brace that was in there, yep. using that as one of the mounts. So I'll get that all prepped up. I'm just advising just him. Happy. I'm yeah, advising yeah. him on some of the engineering I had in mind. Yeah. Changing up some stuff will get a little bit better, you know? Yeah. Hell, yeah. shit, keep going. What's been going on, fellas? I've been seeing a lot of measuring and lots, angling and adjusting. And lots of measuring. We didn't just measure twice. We measured about Nine 69 times. times. That's we, the approved amount of times that we're going yeah. for here. We want to make sure that the differential is square into the subframe in all directions. So we don't want any twist this way. We don't want any twist this way. We don't want any twist this way. So trying to get all of those things dialed in. We're really close. The front is spot on. So Sean just threw a couple tacks over there. The rear actually is a little bit over this way. So we tacked it on that side and that's gonna try to shrink and actually pull this tube over here a little bit. So we're gonna use that to help us get that lined up. But now that we got that front in place, we will uh, come over here and we will put a couple tacks on this plate so that the diff is now connected to the plate, to this bar, to the front. And then we can twist it a little bit in this direction. If we need to do anything in this direction, uh, we can do that as well. And then we'll put some more tacks, get it all dialed in. This is still not in place because as we move these tubes around, it's gonna change its position here. So if we put a tack on the back right now, we would be stuck and we wouldn't be able to move it. Just one little thing at a time and then thinking about how the tacks affect the material, which way it's gonna pull, using that to our, our advantage here. And uh, pretty soon we will have this squared up, tacked in place, and then we can flip it over and start designing the other side, the top mount of this diff. It's coming along, it's looking good. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, careful. Doing some things over here, Mark. Good. Right. Oh, Dips oh, walking back that whoa, way. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Now over here on the 599, what's going on, Tim? All right, so I'm getting finally one of the header sections out right now. The front section from the passenger side is finally free. It was a pain. All the nuts don't really have a good way of coming out. And now I gotta figure out how it's gonna come out of the car. There you go. There you go. That's one out of four. Tim is about to unbag the headers for Damon's 599. He's working on the manual conversion, putting the full exhaust on there from Valtronic, and here it is. This Dude. is the other header from the other side. The other header from the other side. Because we uh, there it is. We did unbox one Look before, collector. but this will go in today. So there it is, crazy screamer pipe. The blammer. Ready to, uh, Sean's coming in hot with the welder. Sean has got the mounts for the power steering pump all welded up and now painted. Yes. They're looking good, brother. Thank you, sir. Now we're gonna move back onto the subframe and work on this top mount. So I'm gonna work on bending up a test piece to kind of get the location of the bends right. Uh, that way we can just make it in one piece, hopefully. If that doesn't work out, it's not that big of a deal if it is two piece, but we're gonna try and do it in one shot. So we'll work on uh, bending up that test piece, mocking it up, and then get that thing banged out. 
John, you've been putting in a lot of work over here. What's yeah, going man. on? So all the pieces are pretty much cut out, ready to get tacked together. Everything's mocked up. So right now I just finished cutting the last two, like these bosses that basically will get bolted here. The hoop bent up. These are good to go. The top gusset, gotcha. uh, the top mount, and then the, the side gussets that'll go on the side here. Oh, dude, that's sick. So basically just got to fit everything up and tack it together and weld it all up. All right, Mike, Sean's been working on the F12. Tim's working on Damon's 599. What's yep. been going on with you, man? Um, well, right now I am pulling apart the center console on Dave's car, which has already been manually converted. So we're going to figure out the position exactly where the shifter needs to go through because right now, Damon's car, the transmission tunnel has not been cut open. We have to drill a few holes and uh, maybe cut a slot and also cut a hole in the rear firewall for the shift cables to go through. So pulling this apart is gonna allow me to see how that's all done, make sure we replicate that properly. And also with it apart, I'm gonna look and see how we're gonna mount the e-brake. Since this one is already done, I can figure out if a flat plate bolted in between the shifter and uh, the back side of the tunnel actually has a plate that sandwiches the shifter so maybe I can make an offset steel plate that'll bolt in between those two and mount the e-brake. And uh, then I'll figure out like, I gotta cut some of this original center console out to fit the e-brake, but just kind of go through the steps of seeing what, uh, what we need to cut and how we're gonna build this bracket. So once I get this all apart, be able to have a really clear view of what's going on here. Oh, yes, just, okay. Now we can see what's going on down here. Take some measurements and figure out some points of uh, like factory bolt holes. These studs right here, so I can measure off of that forward, off the sides, and locate exactly where the shifter's gonna go. Take some notes, go over to the other car, figure out how to get this e-brake in here. We obviously wanna keep the factory e-brake, so when we park the car, we can still put the e-brake up and keep the car from rolling because the style of e-brakes we have don't have like a lock on them to keep them in position with like pressure in them. So we'll keep this, but gotta make sure this isn't gonna get in the way because if we have to get rid of it, we have to get rid of it. Let's see if we can fit it in here with the factory e-brake. Boom, e-brake installed. Actually, that might, that might work. It's gonna be a little tight with all the lines coming out of the master. So I got the positioning of the e-brake figured out. <laughs> <laughs> I want in on this, man. I'm excited, like really excited. Yeah. Because this is working really good in the Huracan. Yeah, and putting it in the 599s with a clutch pedal and with a manual transmission, Bro. that's game that's changer. when it's gonna be a game changer. Game changer, because yes. look at this. Ooh. Hold on, let me just straighten that out. Look, hold on, let me just straighten that out. <laughs> look at the beauty. I mean, this thing is all billet, it's gorgeous. And just so you know, these, a lot of this stuff is actually factory Ferrari, some of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, all right, so what are we doing? You're designing so, like uh, Yeah, I was looking at positioning of the e-brake. Um, edge of the tunnel's right here, not a lot of room to work with. The seat is right there. It's gonna be real close here. We're actually gonna cut these tabs off and get it even closer. And I was just checking to see, to make sure that we have enough clearance for when it's in reverse. Yeah. Right, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be bad if it didn't work, right? So, well, just in just, the right spot. Just, yeah. You only need to be able to get it in reverse and not smash your hand into this. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna Because be, you're not gonna pull this while it's in reverse. So the goal is just like, maybe like a little more like that. Um, yeah, we're gonna, I think, if we get it too far forward, it's really close to the dash. Really? So not enough hand room. So yeah. I think that's gonna be it right there. Basically, uh, edge of this lined up with the edge of that. Yeah. Uh, looked like the best positioning. When you put it in reverse, it's gonna have to be like an open hand thing, right? Rather than, yep. Yeah. Gotcha. So click it, click it down yeah, and push it forward. Obviously it's spinning, so it's hard to do, but yeah, click it forward like that. And then all the other gears, like the, uh, the distance there, looks pretty good so you can have your hand around there yep. and not hit your hand on the e-brake handle i got big hands mike i right, so also I'll have add. big feet there's also adjustability in here we can also cut the dash yeah just, just chop like whole slot yeah, just yeah. make a little channel right there by the way this is driving mike nuts he's being really played on camera this is why i don't build the cars guys there's a lot of details yeah. all it is is details yeah yeah and I'm so impatient. I would make it look ugly, but functional. Michael, make it functional and look really pretty. Thank you. Absolutely. Mike is functional and really pretty. That's right. Yeah, I wasn't talking about the bills. I was talking about Mike.
All right, so I got the plate cut out and it's about ready to go, but I needed to sand this down, get this rust off it, and then I'll put it in the car and do a test fit. Whoa! You need a pen? You need a pen? Thanks, yep. Well, that was weird, but I'm gonna get on this. I'm gonna sand this down, get this rust off of here, and then put it in the 599, see how it fits. All right, we've made a ton of progress on these three V12 Ferraris. We've got the quick change differential all mounted up. Everything is done. There's a few little spots that need to get welded up that Sean's gonna knock out right now. But other than that, everything is done. We've got the top part built, the brace and everything on there is all good to go. We've got the front snout mounted. It is looking really good and uh, honestly, I do not think there's any way that we can bend this. The car is gonna make 1500 horsepower and this will definitely take that abuse. Plus all the clutch kicks and e-brakes and everything that we're gonna throw at that car. I am very happy with this came out. I'm also basically done the 599 e-brake mount. Now it just needs to be installed in the car. I've got the e-brake placed where it's gonna go. Uh, this is actually the sandwich plate that comes with the EAG shifter. This is gonna go underneath the chassis in the tunnel. And then this is gonna go on top of there. The shifter is gonna go on top of that. Oh, These will nice. all get sandwiched and bolted together. So it's all kind of like one unit. Looks really good. It's nice and tight, fits really well on the car. I don't think that we could have gotten anything better in that car. The, the position of the e-brake handle, where it sits, with the shift knob, with the dash, with the seat, this is just small enough to fit in there. So we'll get another one of these plates cut out. So we have two of them for both of the 599s. And then when we go and mount this shifter into Damon's car, we'll draw all those holes. Obviously in Dave's car, we'll have to unbolt the shifter that's in there right now and put the plate in, but that's pretty easy. Then we can wrap that car up. Before we go and check in with Tim, we've also got the power steering pump mounts that have been finished up. So. We've got both of them sitting up here, ready to go. They're all bolted in, they look good. So this is a factory Ferrari brace that was in the car that goes in between the frame rail and uh, basically where the fender sits. Now we've got the steel mount for the power string pump. That looks really good. It's on the rubber isolators. It won't kill the pump with vibration. Few other fittings I need to get those put in the car. Tim's been in that car pretty much all day, upside down, underneath the dash, working on the pedal box. It's an absolute nightmare on these 599s. It's a plastic pedal box that gets bolted into the firewall. Obviously you had to pull that stuff out. Cut a piece of the brake pedal off because the factory brake pedal is pretty big because it's almost like an automatic. Cut a section of that off. Now he's putting everything back in there and he is still upside down in there. Oh. It looks like he's working his way away from the firewall now and closer to uh, being wrapped up with that yeah, pedal. Yeah, last time I saw you, you had your feet all the way up here. Yeah, I uh, pretty much got all the pedals in. Paddles are out. It's ready for the shifter and the master's in. Nice. Uh, length is set. Obviously I need to bleed it, but I'll just leave this exposed because I know we have to put the uh, handbrake and the shifter and up. So we've had this prod now with the 2599s for three weeks doing the manual conversion in Damon's car. So we did the manual conversions and both cars are done. They're both straight piped with headers. They both have handbrakes thanks to Mike now, but they don't run. That's my fault. Underneath your feet, the passenger side, there's uh, one of two ECUs. As you know, when you convert to manual in the last video, this car, you had to get it reprogrammed. I requested that Steven copy the ECU and paste it into this car. I talked to Art at EAG, he goes, no, 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 no. Apparently that's a no-no. It'll corrupt the files. There's 99 variants of software for the 599 based on VIN number. If you tweak that at all, it'll lock up the ECU and possibly brick it. EAG spent a ton of time trying to make this ECU for the F1 gearbox work without all that stuff to do the manual conversion. So they spent a ton of time making that file and that's not something Alex has access to. Yeah. Obviously not something that EAG just wants to give away for free because they spent a ton of time and money on that. Now we've got both cars with completely dead ECUs, neither of them will run. I'm gonna mail them to EAG. Art says he might be able to recover the data and make it work. If not, we have to buy new ECUs. But they don't come programmed. No. The dealer has to do it. Yeah. So they come basically blank. They can't put the introductory file into it. There's more terms I'm not saying right. Ferrari has to do it. The problem is that Ferrari won't touch these cars because they're converted. Exactly, they're so modified yeah. and they're converted. And if we bring these cars to them on a trailer with ECUs like, oh yeah, we just got these new ECUs and we're gonna plug them in, can you guys program it for us? They're gonna say, no, it's not gonna work. We don't have a manual EAG conversion kit no. tune for these cars. So now we have three V12 Ferraris that are done. They do not run. They've got serious issues. We've also got issues 
with the F12, which we're not gonna talk about right now. That's a different video. That's a whole nother problem. This sucks. Our only actual solution, if this doesn't work, is we go MoTeC and go standalone. What would that cost if I wire it up? It's like, how much do you think per car? I mean, easy, like, 35 to 40 grand per car. Per car? Per car, custom, complete custom wire harness. You can't use a factory wire harness? No, we'd either have to buy two ECUs for each car and then make adapters to try to get them to plug in. But then you also have like the CAN bus system, which is really complex and it'd take a ton of time to figure out all these codes to make all the stock electronics work. So now you're kind of opening up Pandora's box. It's just a bunch of other issues when you try to put something like that, like a race ECU in a street car. And to be clear, it's my fault. I asked Steven, our in-house tech, to copy my ECU and put it in Damon's, well, I just copy yeah. it. Yeah, we're like, hey, this one's already got the flame tune. Yeah, yeah, it's got the manual over. conversion. It's, it's got everything in there. It's well, good to go. I mean, if it's cost us like 80, 80 grand, or, or if it's even possible. But anyway, that's it for this project for now. The 599s are basically paperweights, and uh, that's all I have to talk about right now. I'm gonna go and cry my office. Well, see you later.